Dr. Barger, thanks so much for being with me today. Sure, I'm happy to be here. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the data initiatives at the National Science Foundation? Uh, there are many, as you can imagine, uh, data is now the really uh, important and key aspect in every uh, discipline. And national across all science. Across <laughs> all sciences. And so National Science Foundation, of course, supports research in all sciences, uh, except actually biomedicine. But we do support uh, areas of biology and uh, and also areas of social science, as, and some of those do relate to biomedicine. Are there any particular areas that excite you personally the most? Any particular questions that are being answered or initiatives that really sparked your interest? Actually, there are many. So um, I think the way to characterize all of them, uh, which are very exciting right now, is NSF uh, invests a lot of uh, funds in really new data collection activities. So collecting data that has never been collected before. So that's absolutely exciting. So if you look at astronomy, for example, there is something called the LSST, Large Synoptic Survey Telescope. Uh, and it's a new kind of telescope with much higher resolution that's collecting huge, um, they'll be collecting huge amounts of data. The, the project has just started. And by, uh, as uh, Dr. Cordova in her keynote yesterday here mentioned, by 2020, it would be finished and collecting a huge amounts of data, literally petabytes of data, looking farther into deep space and essentially, in the end, trying to understand the origins of the universe because we are looking at star activity in deep space. That's in astronomy. There's similarly huge investments right here on Earth. <laughs> so there's a project called NEON, which okay. is the National Ecological Observatory Network. Uh, which is for essentially terrestrial ecology. Uh, and there are a couple of hundred sites across the whole continental US, uh, including Alaska and Hawaii, where there are all sorts of instrumentation, you know, sensor networks that are being deployed, plus field surveys uh, and uh, remote sensing data. So, you know, planes flying over and satellite data collecting remote sensing information about those locations. And so now instead of, in a, you know, so far ecology has looked at very local phenomena. But now with this kind of data, we can look at regional and even continental scale phenomena. So that's another new. A third exciting one is called the Ocean Observing okay. Initiative. That's deploying, uh, again, very uh, high rate sensors and very advanced uh, sensor technologies that collect data at very high rates and high resolution. But this is now underwater. Is there any concern that there's just going to be data overload? For example, that we'll have too much data and we won't know what to do with it. I know in biomedical sciences, some people worry about having too much human data and physicians or scientists don't know how to interpret it. We're at the very early stages of this revolution. I mean, I really think of this as, it's, this is the data age, it's the data revolution. So we're in the phase right now where we are collecting lots of new data that we were not able to collect before. So the excitement is about collecting the data. I suspect what will happen, in, at least in some cases, is we would go through this phase of collecting lots of data and analyzing it and then understanding what are the phenomena we are observing, at which time maybe we don't need to collect as much because we have understood what's going on. And then the collection of data may be more targeted. So that's one possibility. Uh, unfortunately, if you actually look at biomedicine and fields like that, um, it's hard to see where it's going to stop because uh, if, you're, if, you're a, you know, if you're a patient, as a human being on this earth, you probably want medical information about you to be available as long as you live. That's about 80 years. Right, so you have to collect data for 80 years for every individual. How are, we, how are we going to tackle that problem is still an interesting challenge. Even there, maybe we will decide that we don't really need all that amount of data that we think right now we want to collect. Um, and whether that's due to uh, scientific knowledge that we gain that tells us that, oh, we really don't need that much data because we can still make predictive uh, analysis and predict things based on lesser amount of data, or simply the economic pressures that we are unable, as you say, we will just be unable to collect and process this data. So that alone may uh, reduce. So we, we don't know, but we are at the early stage of this. So so right now it's, it's all about collecting data, and I think that's great. Dr. Yeah. Bhatti, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you. Really appreciate it.